Hey, all right, everybody, we're back for another session of chart reading. If you're an options trader or even just a regular trader and you want to improve your trading, get to that next level of profitability. How do you do that? You got to look at the stock charts. I do these just about every week. I've been an options trader for over 30 years now. How do you know when it's time to get into an option trade? Whether you're, whether you're buying calls, buying puts, doing credit spreads, debit spreads, iron condors, whatever. You still have to know what the stock may or may not do. You can't just trade options in a vacuum. You can't just say, hey, I just want to trade options without knowing anything about the company. Okay, so you have to know something about the company first, but then you have to look at the stock charts to see if the stock's going up or going down. There's no other way. So I make these free videos for the trading community, try to help everybody out. What I do in these videos is show you my screens, show you my charts. We're going to look at stocks, the indexes, and see what happened over this past week of trading so you can get ready for next week's trading and get your option trades in there so you can make more money. All right, so let's just jump right in and get going. All right, everyone, Lee Lowell here from smartoptionseller.com. That's what we do. We look at the charts because you want to be a better options trader. So let's just jump right in as we do every week. For those of you that are new, these are the charts that I look at. Up here is the price action. This is a daily bar chart, open, high, low, close bars, not candlestick bars. This is the price action. You can see which way the stock has been moving. This is a chart of the SPY, which is the exchange traded fund for the S&P 500. Here's the symbol up here, SPY. And each one of these bars here is one day's worth of trading. These other lines you see here, the blue, red, and the green, are the 20-day, 50-day, and 200-day simple moving averages. That's what helps us determine which way a stock is trending, up or down. The slope of the moving averages is very important. And down here is the only other indicator I use. It's the RSI. It's an overbought, oversold oscillator, 14-day look-back period based on closing prices. So the oscillator moves according to the price action up here. And the RSI has an overbought level of 80 that I use and an oversold level of 20. You can change those to whatever you want. I use 80 and 20, and you can see it oscillates from oversold to overbought based on the price action. So when it gets oversold or overbought, it's telling you that prices are at an, at an extreme area and a turn could be happening soon. Okay, so we use that as our gauge of you know when a turn might might happen the other thing that we use is the trend of the stock the trend of the stock is probably the most important thing is the stock or index in an uptrend or downtrend because trends will continue until they move in another direction so you want to get on board the trend now i usually have lines on here so i want to I took them all off, so I just want to draw some new lines. As you can see, so here's the trading from Friday, February 23rd. We're hitting all-time new highs in the market. So when we want to draw trend lines, what we can do is we go to our little drawing tool here, and you can just see how strong the trend is. What you want to do is you want to grab some tops of prior moves and just kind of connect them, and that gives you the trend that the stock is in currently very strong uptrend in 2022 we had a down market for almost the whole year we can draw some more trend lines here and you can see the market was just in a big downtrend for most of 2022 until about october and then october 22 things started to move up so once again we can either you know you can draw these trend lines at different at various different times but you can just do that to give you a visual of, you know, where the market is moving. So, you know, your timing patterns are, if you want to get short, you probably better off selling near the top or buying puts or whatever when it comes up to the top edge of the trend line. And then down at the bottom is where you want to take a stab at buying the market or the stock or whatever you're looking at. So trend lines are very important, along with patterns that, that occur all the time as well. And when I look at some stocks here, I'll show you some other patterns. So where has, where did the market go this past week? Well, we've hit more all-time new highs 
in all the markets. So this is the, the SPY, the S&P 500. Let's go back and look at the monthly chart here and see how we've hit all time new highs over 500 on the SPY. The, the, this is you know one tenth the size of the S&P 500 index itself. We can look at the triple Qs, which is for the NASDAQ, and you can see as well all time new highs there. Let's go back to the daily chart and let the uh, indicators and the moving averages fall in. So once again, we had a really strong week. We've had we've been having great movements since the end of October. The market's just been going up, up, up. You've probably heard so many people say there's going to be a new bear market. We're going to have a recession. The market can't go up anymore. You know, when you have that many doomsayers out there, what does the market do? It goes up because there's so many people thinking that the market's going to drop. But you have to understand, and I say this all the time, the market, the stock market is made up of companies that are creating products that people are buying. So if these companies are increasing their earnings quarter after quarter, which a lot of these companies are doing, there's no other way for the stock price to go than up. It has to. If the company's profitable over and over again, quarter after quarter, the stock price has to go up. And that's what's happening. So in the long run, the stock market will always go up. Yes, we're going to have pullbacks. I say this all the time. We're going to have pullbacks. But those are your opportunities to get in. Wait for pullbacks to any of the moving averages or draw yourself some trend lines. OK, we can look at the diamonds, which is the exchange traded fund for the Dow Jones. Here's the symbol up here, DIA. Also hitting all time new highs. That's over 39,000 on the Dow itself. It's just incredible. So the market's really strong. I mean, really, really strong. What I will say is that, it, you know, the, some of these NASDAQ tech stocks have really gotten overheated. One of the things that I like to look for here on the RSI is that you can see the price action is moving up. But the RSI itself is moving down, meaning the momentum is losing speed or losing um, strength on the upside. You know, when price goes up and the RSI starts going down or not moving up as well, that's a, you know, you know, should raise some flags that, you know, we may be getting a little overheated on the upside. So I can say that a pullback is probably going to be the next move, whether it's just back down to the 20 day moving average, you can see. You can see in a strongly trending market, it will pretty much um, tag along with the 20 day moving average. That means it's really strong. So if we get a little pullback back down to the 20 day moving average, the RSI will come off a little bit more. But I'd rather buy when we get a pullback. OK, so let's look at some individual stocks, see what's happened over this past week. Actually, I can just pull up some couple here because I can just show you some of these. Let's look at SMCI because I get asked about this stock probably more than any in the last month or so. Look at this stock, SMCI. If you want to know the symbol up here in the left hand corner, SMCI. It's a it's a computer company, chip company. I think it's big on AI. So that's all the rage. Look, it was at $300 just in the beginning of January, and it almost tagged $1,100 just last week. I mean, just an unbelievable move. If you're lucky enough to catch one of these moves in your lifetime, you've got it made. And, and, and that should happen over years and years. A stock going up almost $800 a share should not be happening in one month's time. Um, it's just incredible. So kudos to those of you who got on board here if you did congratulations but moves like this are, are hard to come by um but anyway so smci just had an incredible move up had that quick little pullback just in a couple days to the 20 day moving average right here you can see but you got to be quick and you got to have some balls if you want to get on this thing and then it rallied up back to a, a thousand and then it came back down so it's getting pretty volatile here it's probably going to uh, consolidate around these highs here maybe for the next couple days wait for the 20 day moving average to catch up again and then then the blast off may happen again so keep an eye on smci let's also look at nvidia they had earnings this week 
everyone was waiting for Nvidia's earnings. You can see right here. Here's where it was the day before earnings came out this past week, Wednesday after the close. It was sitting right on the 20 day moving average. If you were game and you were bullish on Nvidia, this was a great opportunity to buy right here around $675 a share or so. It just powered higher. It got up to 825 at the top. So great move for Nvidia. Everyone was waiting and it just powered the rest of the market higher most of these big tech stocks so nvidia strong but you know i can't buy up here i'd have to wait for some kind of pullback maybe towards the 20 day moving average again and get ready for that next move higher it's got the momentum behind it the only way i i would probably get in is i gotta wait for some kind of pullback here before jumping in because getting up on the highs is not to me the smartest thing i, I need to wait for some kind of pullback let's take a look at some other uh stocks Adobe was a stock that I've talked about in the past. Uh, I was hoping to see a bounce right here last week or whenever this was right off the 20 day moving average. It had been moving up, but it, it dropped below it. But look how it just found the support right on this 200 day moving average. The 200 day moving average is pretty much that last line of support. If it can catch, if it could hold on here, then that means the support's gonna hold and then it should turn or at least move up some. Um, the RSI was getting a little oversold here. So keep an eye, if you're bullish on, on Adobe, keep an eye on this 200-day moving average level right here because this could be the place to maybe nibble on some longs. You want to make sure that it doesn't come back down again and, and drop below the 200-day moving average, but we could have the support right here. So if you're gung-ho on Adobe, keep an eye on this level. It may start to jump up from there. Um, what other big stocks? We're going to look at the, the, the major stocks because these are the ones that people like to play with. Microsoft, um, still a strong stock, still in a good uptrend. See, it's been hugging along the 20-day moving average. When a stock's in a good trend, whether that's up or down, it's going to hug along the 20-day moving average. When it's not in that strongest of a trend, the 50-day moving average will come more into play, or you can see how it pulls back to both the 20-day and 50-day here, and then it moves higher again. So what I call your higher probability timing patterns or your, you know, your higher probability setups is when you know, a stock's in a good uptrend or downtrend, and it pulls back to either the 50-day or 20-day moving average and then starts to continue on in that same direction. So if you feel like you missed the move here, you're like, oh, I, I want to get on in that move, you wait for the pullback. The market will always be here. Wait for your better timing patterns and, and the higher probability setups, and then you'll be happier because you won't get so scared out of position or it won't knock you out of position and you you know you'll be getting in at a better opportunity so this is microsoft looking good i think this was all time highs here let's take a quick look on the monthly chart yep microsoft over 400 dollars a share 420 dollars a share so all time new highs everything's looking pretty strong and you know at this point what's gonna what's gonna take the market down Yes, maybe a geopolitical event, you know, maybe another start of a war or something. But you, you can't stop these companies from pumping out products that people want to buy and people pay for it and, and increase their earnings. That's the thing that moves the market. Yeah, we'll have these these big news events every once in a while that'll, you know, jolt the market down for a short period of time and then things go up again so i'm bullish for the long run i look for the pullbacks in our uh website smart option seller we run newsletters we have bullish trades which are selling naked put options and selling put option credit spreads if you know nothing about that let me quickly take you to our website smartoptionseller.com grab yourself our free ebook right here click on it and it's going to bring you to our page Put Selling Basics is the ebook. You scroll down, put your name and email address here. I'll send you an email back with a link to download the free copy. Here's our services tab. We have our two newsletters here. Either one you can look at. We have our one-on-one -on -one coaching for those of you who want to get, you know, a leg up. We can talk about things and get you set on your way. We have our five-part put selling 
uh, video series. If you want to take a deeper dive into what Put Song's all about, take a look at our video series. Okay, so that's what we do. Uh, let's go back to the charts real quick. So Microsoft looks good. Let's look at AMD. AMD, also an extremely strong stock. These are the chip stocks, NVIDIA, AMD, uh, Micron, Intel. Look at AMD, just such a strong stock hugging along the 20-day moving average. I'm telling you, when stocks are in a strong trend, they're going to hug along the 20-day moving average. So wait for that pullback to the 20-day moving average before stepping in to the longs if that's the way the stock is trending it's just how it works so do yourself a favor and wait for the higher probability setup sets amd tesla another stock that we have so many diehards with tesla tesla's not looking that great of late and i've talked about that the last couple weeks it's sort of in this downtrend we can draw the lines here okay you can you know make your channel let me just let me do that again here you grab some of the tops okay so you can see that tesla's in this downtrend now we may be coming off the bottom edge here rsi starting to move up so maybe if tesla can get its act together it could start to move up to the first uh, moving average to the second moving average and then maybe eventually to the top edge of the downtrending channel but you can see how the the moving averages are all kind of jumbled bumbled together crossing over each other that just means there's a lot of indecision with how Tesla wants to trade. People don't know if it's stocks going up or down. That's why everything's all convoluted here. Tesla's a hard stock to trade. Until it actually gets in a good moving trend, it's gonna move around and be volatile like this. So for right now, I have no opinion on Tesla. Maybe we've hit a bottom here. Maybe the, the path of least resistance could be a little bit higher at this point until it touches, this is the 50 day moving average. So maybe around $215 a share could be the next move if Tesla can get his act, if its act together. But for the most part, I really don't have much to talk about. Um, let me quickly look at my list of stocks here, see if there's anything really of note. Um, okay, let's look at Apple real quick, and we can look at some of the other biggies, Amazon and Netflix and Google. So Apple kind of stuck in a rut here, just sitting on the 200-day moving average, which really should give it support. So you can see it's kind of hovering around the 200-day moving average, not really willing to go much below it, but not really willing to go much above it either so it's kind of stuck in the low 180s right now they don't have earnings coming up for a little while so there's really nothing that's going to drive apple at the moment there's no major news about the company so it it, it may just kind of churn around here for a little bit it for, for me the path of least resistance is probably going to be up at this point it's it's holding on support of the 200 day moving average uh, so i'm thinking that it, if anything it'll go higher but i think more sideways actions sideways action may be the thing for for apple right now let's look at amazon amazon looking strong too look how it's just hugging along the two the 20 day moving average you know it had the had the the, the pop here okay then it pulled back to the 200 day moving average i mean right on, i'm sorry the 20 day moving average right there that was your your higher probability setup for the next leg higher and there it went so at this point, you know, it either could keep going or maybe it'll have a pullback again to the 20 day moving average. And that could be your next sign of, you know, getting on board for Amazon. Netflix, another strong stock. We've actually are trying to get into a, a put option credit spread on Netflix. Looks just like the um, Amazon stock chart hold had the gap up here pull back to the 20 day moving average and starting to go up again you can see how it's hugging along the 20 day moving average. so all these stocks are really strong really strong uptrend they're hugging along the 20 day moving average so you got to go with the trend until it turns around so that next come down or pull back to the 20 day moving average is your higher probability setup for that next leg higher not guaranteed there's no guarantee in trading but that's a higher probability uh setup Google, another stock that probably has somewhat of a similar chart looking, uh, just uptrend, 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 uptrend since last October. Hovering around the moving averages here, I kind of like 
you know, an opportunity to get long here. It's sitting between the 20 day and 50 day moving average. It's in an uptrend. So maybe it's just storing up some energy here. Another pattern that we can look at is what's called the triangle pattern here, where the ranges start to get real tight, 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 and then it's going to blast out either higher or lower. The odds are, since it's been coming into a higher, you know, it's been moving higher, the odds are that when it blasts out of this triangle, it's going to go higher. So keep an eye on Google for that next move higher. My odds are, you know, if I had to make a bet, my bet would be that it's going to blast out higher after it finishes this congestion. And that should be pretty soon because we're sitting right at the apex here. All right. So keep an eye on Google for that pattern. Let's see what other stocks we have. Uh, da, 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 da. Anything that's worthy of looking at. Oh, Costco, another great company. Just look at this beautiful along the 20 day moving average. Costco just keeps moving up. The RSI is kind of moving sideways here. So maybe it'll take a little breather and maybe get a little bit of a pullback where the price action pulls back. The 20 day moving average moves up and it meets somewhere in the middle. Don't know where that could be, maybe $720, $725 a share. But it's in a strong uptrend. All these stocks are doing the same thing. What's going to derail the market? Interest rates in the U.S. are, you know, are still high, uh, but the Fed is, is wavering on whether they're going to take interest rates down or not. So we just don't know yet. But, but everyone knows where interest rates are, so everyone's getting used to it. So stocks are, are moving up. Um, so that's Costco looking good, but maybe a little bit overbought here. Maybe wait for a, somewhat of a pullback to the 20 day moving average and go from there. Uh, we like Walmart. I've talked about Walmart before. Great company. Uh, look at this. They're going to have they, they, they announce a split. So I think come Monday, February 26th, they're going to trade um, post split and prices are going to get slashed in half. I think it was a two for one split. So that's a good thing. People like when companies split their stock because prices become cheaper. There's nothing different about the company, but it just makes it more affordable and more accessible to people. And that gives people an incentive to jump on board now, which could, you know, send the stock back up again. Look at this nice, nice power move higher. So Walmart, good. Uh, anything else in here that that's where, um, yeah, let's look at, let's look at Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett. Berkshire Hathaway, Class B shares, not the Class A shares. These are the Class B shares just going vertical on us. Uh, definitely overbought on the RSI. Um, you know, you can't argue with the Oracle of Omaha. He's just look at this incredible move since, you know, the middle of January. Just just had this nice, incredible up move. Getting overbought for my liking. I want to wait for a little bit of a pullback. If there's something you want, let me show you on our website real quick. Uh, there is a special report that I wrote about uh, different option strategy uh, using Warren Buffett, uh, piggybacking on Warren Buffett. Go to our services tab, click on the shop link here, and it'll bring up this special report that I wrote. The secret to buying Warren Buffett for pennies on the dollar may interest you. Um, let's see what else we had. Then the other last one we want to look at Facebook slash Meta. Same thing. Look at this gap up here. Powered higher earnings. Incredible. And now it's just has a new uh, a new price action here. It just blasted out of its old price action. You can see how it was hugging along the 20 day moving average. So it's consolidating a little bit, waiting for that 20 day moving average to catch up. I'd like to see it come down a little bit more of the price action. If it comes back and touches the 20 day moving average, you want to wait to see if that wait for that curl, wait for that next leg up. And that's your higher probability setup right there. All right. So that's it for the market. Most of the things we're seeing here. Let's quickly go back to the spy. You got to get ready for next week. You got to look at the charts. You got to know what you're doing. You got to understand where whether the, the stock's in an uptrend or downtrend, where it falls within the channel here. You got to draw these channels. You got to look for the patterns and wait for the higher probability setups, which is either bumping along the bottom edge of the channel or bumping along the top edge of the channel or bumping along one of the moving averages. Those are your higher probability setups. All right. I hope that's helpful. I do these videos free for the trading community. 
I'm trying to give everyone a chance to, you know, become a better trader. All right. So I hope everyone has a great weekend. Get ready for next week's trading. And hopefully I'll see you next weekend. This is Lee Lowell signing off.